on my channel, I tend to steer away from covering things that uh, might be considered controversial in nature, at least in regards to something that could, you know, tend to go over into the political side of things because I don't like uh, making political statements. I don't like taking sides. I know it's a slippery slope and it, it just leads to some very intense conversations uh, that tend to get nobody nowhere as everyone tries to force their own political opinions down each other's throats. Uh, and that usually never works and you never really convince anyone to change sides. So it is what it is. I'm not here to tell you how to vote this upcoming November. I'm not here to tell you what to do with your lives. But Sony and PlayStation 5, uh, they, they have some interesting terminology happening uh, in their end user license agreement. And the reason this end user's license, license agreement is even being looked into is because of other things that Sony is doing uh, with not just the PlayStation 5. It technically exists on PlayStation 4, but well, some of this back to the PlayStation 3 as well. But nobody really realized it because we all just click accept and don't really look back and think twice. Uh, one thing that Sony's been under fire for heading into PlayStation 5 launch is they did announce that they will be recording people's conversations, like private conversations, on uh, you know, on PlayStation 5 in particular. And the reason that they're doing this, they say, is to protect users. So they, they kind of went, went went back on and said, well, we're only recording like you know 20, 30 seconds of conversation, like 10 seconds before, 10 seconds after. Uh, this is for people who are going to report other users. It's a rolling thing. They're not going to keep conversations. This is just what Sony claims. We don't actually know what's happening behind the scenes it's kind of one of those things like if you remember some stuff uh i'm not going to go too deep into this but when edward snowden unveiled a bunch of things the government was doing it's kind of one of those situations where do you really trust sony when they say they're not going to keep conversations and when you're going to determine if you're going to ban people based off recorded conversations uh it, it's one of those situations that if you're only going to listen to 30 seconds are we going to lose context uh because in theory, I could report someone uh, and submit a clip or whatever, right? Because you know, like they're only normally doing like five minute snippets, and you could pick take like thirty seconds out of that snippet uh, and report it. Well, if I report a thirty second snippet of someone cussing me out, uh, and it conveniently leaves out the part where I might have started the, the cussing out of that person, uh, someone could get banned without the context of really I started it and they responded, and I should be the one that's banned, right? Like it's a it's a context thing, and it's one of those situations where I understand that Sony's trying to protect its users. Um, Remember, Sony kind of gave those old excuses in the past about why they couldn't have crossplay because they had to protect the children. Uh, so it's another one of those situations where I feel like they're maybe overstepping their bounds a little. I get wanting to protect people, but it's just kind of like with Discord or Skype or anything else. The measures to protect people are already in place. If you know, you can block people, you can mute people. Like the measures are already there for users to take care of this themselves. Sony doesn't really need to step in and be the voice police. I, I, that's just my opinion. I'm going to stick with that opinion because I think that it is wrong for any company to record private conversations on any platform. Uh, just give the tools necessary for users to handle it on their end, which already exists. Um, you know, with the, the mute features, the blocking features, all that jazz, there's all, you know, parents can go on there and literally, you know, block voice chat altogether on some games and stuff like that. So there's parental controls to prevent kids from even dealing with this situation. So yeah, it, to be honest, uh, I, I think that the power should be in the users, the tools should be in the user's hand. Um, and we shouldn't be relying on companies doing any of this stuff, but, but it gets a little bit worse. And it gets a little bit worse because because Sony is recording, people decided to look at the end user license agreement. And you'll see the usual harassment and, and policies and all that jazz, which need to exist and are good. But what you'll also run into is some interesting things that, that deal with China in particular. Now, if you live outside of China, you know, you could say, who cares? And I can completely understand the sentiment. But uh, PlayStation does not uh, allow you... 
uh, to use your account or your PlayStation Network in any way to create, reproduce, or publish, or disseminate any information which opposes the basic principles of the Constitution of the People's Republic of China, endangers the security of the People's Republic of China, divulges people of Republic of China's state records or secrets, jeopardizes the sovereignty or unification of the people of the People's Republic of China, damages the honor and interests of the PRC, violates PRC policies on religion or propaganda, heresies or superstition, disseminates rumors, disrupts social order, or undermines social stability, disseminates obscenity, pornography, gambling, violence, instigates others to commit crimes, is prohibited by PRC laws, administration regulations, and other provisions. Now, on the surface, this doesn't sound like anything out of the ordinary. Why would they have this Chinese-specific law? This seems to be pretty much in line with the rest of their end-user license agreement, which is basically don't be a jerk. Um, but if you actually look at what, what, what this is specifically dealing with, it's dealing with a political situation in China, and these rules that exist in the end-user license agreement are targeting Hong Kong, uh, which... It, it's a whole mess of stuff. Again, I said this gets a little political. I hate getting political. But it gets into a whole mess of things uh, where the People's Republic of China are um, trying to enforce and uh, the overall law of China onto Hong Kong. And for those who don't know, Hong Kong is kind of independent of China, even though it's part of the country. It's, it's a really sticky situation. But basically, Hong Kong is a more free area, more democratic area a more uh you know in line with kind of how uh you know united states and other places run and the people's republic of china is definitely not that uh and they are trying to suppress it and force hong kong to uh conform to the rest of chinese law and the thing is the people's republic of china are the exact people that are enacting slavery uh and moving certain people uh to making uh you know working in factories including at foxconn this has been a controversy we've briefly touched on in the past in regards to electronics manufacturing because there is technically slave labor involved in it. And this is because of the People's Republic of China, even though they are denying it. Uh, obviously, we can talk about the COVID-19 stuff and how they doctored numbers. and it, It's just crazy, right? I'm not here to get into conspiracy theories. The pandemic is real. Wear masks. Be safe out there. I'm just saying that China does a lot of really bad things. Um, Hong Kong's always been kind of the exception to this. You've actually been able to buy switches in China long before China allowed, you know, electronic devices to be sold there because, again, Hong Kong operated in a bubble. Well, the People's Republic of China is trying to burst that bubble, use their military, uh, and suppress uh, people who are trying to speak out against the government. Imagine if uh, in the United States... You know, we weren't allowed to speak our opinions one way or another on the president or uh, the policies or anything. We, we didn't have the freedom of speech. They are trying to suppress freedom of speech. And Sony is being complicit in that suppression with their uh, device. Now, again, outside of China, you know, this, who really cares? This rule only applies to people that live in China. But the thing is, is this means that PlayStation is placating uh, China. They are, you know, I went through the end user license agreement for Switch, which also exists in China, and they do not have specific rules like this in their end users license agreement. I went through Microsoft's end users license agreement, and they too do not have any specific rules specific to the People's Republic of China, and their devices are all also available in China. So these aren't rules that need to exist for the platforms to be sold in China. This is likely a backdoors, behind-scenes handshake between the People's Republic of China and Sony that maybe lets them get cheaper manufacturing, maybe lets them, uh, you know, which, again, uh, does affect things, uh, maybe lets them get certain perks and benefits in the retail space, whatever the case might be. Uh, and I'm not saying that, like, Nintendo and all these companies are innocent. I mean, Nintendo works with Tencent. Tencent does some crappy things in China. It is what it is. China is all sorts of messed up in many different ways. Uh, but yeah, it's very interesting that Sony here um, is basically bowing down to the government of China uh, and when they don't need to, to sell their products. Um, and everyone just kind of didn't notice because nobody ever reads these license agreements. And you might be like, well, you know, who cares? People don't read license agreements all the time. You know, we're already on social media. We're on YouTube. Did you really read YouTube's you know, end user license agreement before you made an account here? And like, no, 
I didn't. Most people haven't. And I, but but it, it is concerning when this is a, a company that's recording voice conversations, actively admitting they're recording, you know, five minutes of voice recordings, but only thirty seconds. It's a rolling thing. They delete things. They claim like. How many times have we caught companies in lies about this kind of stuff? So, again, I don't know what this means. There are those out there saying that we should boycott uh, Sony and the PlayStation 5. I don't know. Um, it's tough for me as someone who covers these platforms to consider boycotting. Um, I I still am excited for PlayStation 5 and the games. Like, you know, th th this, this thing doesn't affect me in the U.S. because... I'm not necessarily agreeing to it in the U.S. because we could talk about whatever we want on PlayStation. I mean, the voice recording thing obviously affects us, but it, I, I don't know what Sony's doing, okay? I'm not trying to get political. I just don't know what they're doing. They've been making these really funky decisions now, I don't know, for like the last five or so years. Um, it, it's really weird. Uh, these things where Sony feels like they need to uh, be the government basically uh it's weird remember i mean we, we already talked about the weird situation where they wouldn't allow crossplay for a while because they needed to protect the children as if other companies aren't doing that and protecting the children in a game owned by another company hello minecraft like it i, I didn't I, it's just such a weird situation to me to be completely honest i don't know what's happening uh, Sony did move their headquarters technically from Japan to California at one point. Uh, so there is that. Uh, I, I just don't know. This is a really weird situation. And I, I want to know your guys' thoughts on it because I think this is just like the latest in a, in a line of things that Sony is doing behind the, scene, behind, the, behind the scenes that they're hoping people don't notice. Uh, and when they make public comments on it, it never comes off that well. Um, I, I don't know. I just don't know. Yeah, it makes me feel uncomfortable. I, I guess is the best way to put it. It makes me feel uncomfortable about buying a PlayStation 5. I'm probably still going to buy one. Call me a hypocrite. I'm still going to play the games. Call me a hypocrite. I'm still excited. Call me a hypocrite. That's fine. I'll openly admit I'm being a hypocrite. I just, I'm a lot more uncomfortable uh, now. And I'm, and, and if nothing else, I'm probably going to end up playing all my multi-platform games on, on the Xbox and the Switch. I, I just, I, I just, I don't know, guys. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about this. I hate being negative all the time. Like, I, I'm legitimately excited for PlayStation 5, but I'm also, I, I can't ignore some of these things that Sony keeps doing behind the scenes that just, I don't know, guys. Like, it doesn't make me feel good, I guess. is the is, is, Like, something just feels off at Sony. So, something's just not right. I don't know what it is. I don't know if they're just getting you know big paychecks behind the scenes from from places that make them make these decisions. I don't know, but I so, something just doesn't feel right. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Maybe I'm overreacting. Maybe this is a big nothing burger to you. Um, I am Nathaniel Robin Jess from the Tenor Prime. I'll have uh, links in the uh, in the description to the sources on the, on the voice chat stuff and obviously uh, the end user license agreement that has this uh, China stuff in it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.